What's going on? Today we're going to talk about how to build a competitive environment in your business with your sales team, with your team members, whatever it may be. Okay. My name is Michael Marive and I was able to build a team of 150 plus sales guys in less than two and a half years. We did that with zero money invested and now we have a growing solar company that's blown up from coast to coast like butter on toast. So how do you build a competitive environment with your sales team or with your team? Very simple. You have to become competitive yourself. Are you a competitive individual? Okay. Like if you think about a business owner or a sales leader or a manager, whatever, you have to have some kind of fire inside of you to say, Hey, I want to win. Like you got to have a winning spirit inside of you because if you don't have a winning spirit, you're not going to attract a lot of winners. Winners love to be around other winners. Okay. And when I recruit people, me specifically, I love recruiting people that have a high ego. Okay. Now you may say, Michael, I don't want those kind of people. They're very difficult to deal with. Yes, they're very difficult to deal with, but if you know how to deal with them, right? A strong fish flows against the current. A dead fish flows with the current, right? So I want some ego-centric kind of guys that I can just tickle a little bit here and there, poke here and there, and get them to get excited about their future. And they're gonna usually, they're usually the ones that create massive success, okay? Now remember, I'm not talking about unhealthy egos. I'm talking about healthy, successful egos. Like good, competitive individuals that have a high ego, they have high self-image, high self-confidence. Like they're just, they're just, they're just, you know what I'm saying? So. I look for the ego thing. Now, I love that because when you put like a shark in a room with another shark, they start flustering their feathers. You know what I'm saying? They start walking in a little bit different, a little pep in their step. And I like that because that creates a competitive environment. When someone's like, yo, I'm going to do two sales this week. And the other guy's like, no, I'm going to do three. And the head, they're like, yeah, I'm going to crush this guy this week. In a positive, obviously way, in a very friendly, loving way. But like that ego helps you grow a competitive environment. Okay. So you got to have the right people in your team. Next, you got to know your team. You got to know what motivates them or what drives them. You gotta know what ticks them off. You gotta know what pisses them off. Like, sometimes you wanna poke them a little bit, get them a little angry, get them a little upset in a, in a good way. Like, for example, if I go to one of my guys on my team, I'm not gonna say his name, but if I go to him and say, yo, I thought you were gonna do two shows this week. <laughs> if I just do that, boom, different monster. Competition kicks in. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna crush it this week. So you gotta know your team. You can't do that with everybody. You do that with the wrong person, they'll start crying. They'll go call their mom and say, yo, I don't wanna do this anymore. So you gotta be very careful how you inspire and motivate your team. Okay? Very careful. You gotta know them. You gotta know them, like, what motivates them? What drives them? What ticks them off? You have to understand that. Okay? Next. We just talked about a video about setting commissions. You can see it right here. But you wanna make sure that your commissions make people wanna compete. You wanna make a commission where people are incentivized to go make money. So I've seen some people's commission and it's like, why would someone wanna do that? Like, I understand you pay them salary. Every position you can think of can be commissioned, salary and commissioned. So if you have an employee that does, I don't know, let's say she's an assistant, you could say, hey, for every X, Y, and Z you get done, you get an extra commission, five, ten dollars, whatever it is, I don't know. But if they can make an extra hundred, two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks a week, or an extra thousand bucks a week, whatever it is, it'll motivate them. And it'll create a competitive environment where they want to do more, especially if you have two people in that position. When I hire somebody, I love hiring two, three people at the same time. I hate doing onesies, twosies. I hate that. I like two, three, four, five, six, seven people. I love doing trainings with four or five people. Why? Because I know that people in the room are going to be competing with each other. I want them to compete. I want the natural competition. That's what creates the best products in the world, right? Free enterprise system. America has competition. Look at Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, and ATT. Now, I know T-Mobile bought Sprint, so it's three companies. In my opinion, it's getting worse and worse and worse. Why? Because there's less competition. If there was like 10 different companies, oh my God, we would have one of the best cell phone service on the planet. There's a lot of cars out there. Why do you think cars are getting better every single year? Because there's so many different companies, so many different competition, and that makes things better. Tesla came out of nowhere and boom, boom smacked everyone out. Now we have Lucid coming. I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see. But like you need the competition, okay? Next, transparency. All the data is transparent. Everybody knows how much everyone's making. Everyone knows how much sales everyone's making. It puts indirect pressure on everyone. Okay, and direct pressure. I want my team to know that Joseph, Bobby, Shmoey, how many sales they did, where they're at for the week, where they're at for the month, where they're at for the year, how much they did, how much they didn't do, and it's all put on a freaking TV. Look at it. It's on a website. Look at it. Every time you, anytime you want to look at it, you can look at it. Because I want it to be transparent. Right? When we do comic clubs, every single week we do comic clubs. Everyone's check. That's not the gross check. That's the net check. That's how much they're getting. Once the customer gets installed, once the customer gets finished, right? So like that kind of stuff is important. People need to see that. That creates competition. Next, 
Recognition, I've talked about a little bit about the, the comic club, right? Competition happens when you recognize other people. Some people are, they'll, they'll kill to be recognized. They will literally kill to be recognized, okay? And you don't want to recognize them? Recognize people, man. You did an amazing job yesterday. Congratulations, awesome. Some people are sitting there saying, hmm, you didn't call my name today? I'm going to crush it today. And that's what you want. You want to create that fire inside of them, right? You want to create that competition through recognition, all right? Next, challenges and competitions. I do challenges all the time. All right, Bobby versus Joey. Today you guys compete. Whoever wins gets 20 bucks. Listen, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Now they go compete. And they shake hands and look at each other's eyes and they go, all right, all right. And then the whole chat, the whole group is getting crazy. Everyone's getting excited. Everyone's rooting for each other, right? Because you have a competition. You have a challenge. We have a competition right now where one of the persons that's going to win is going to go on a trip for a couple of days, all expenses pay. Like we create crazy trips like that because we want to incentivize the team. Competition is everything. I want competition. Remember, all with love. Everything is with love. Not when I want to kill someone or hurt someone, but no, with love. Does that make sense? Next, motivations and fire. You got to figure out this is also, this kind of mesh, you know, meshes with knowing your team, but like you got to know what motivates people. What are their motivations? What are their inspirations? What are they trying to accomplish right now? Are they thinking about their mom and buying them a car? So you got to know that. If you know that, take a picture of that Honda that he's trying to buy his mom and slip it under the table. Say, yo, I thought you wanted to help your mom with a Honda. And he wasn't doing so good for the past two weeks. Hey, what's up? I thought you wanted to do X, Y, and Z. Hey, I put a fire under the butt. Hey, didn't you tell me you wanted to, you know, do X, Y, and Z? Did you want to get a new apartment and you're staying home on Saturday? You don't have to work on a Saturday, but hey, separation Saturday, bro. Separation Saturday. Separation Saturday. Like, you want to poke them a little bit. Like we talk, we, we've been talking about it the whole video. Like, you got to know your team. And you got to find their motivations. I used to have a notebook because I had like 30 leaders, right? I used to have a notebook with every single one of their motivations because I couldn't remember all of them. There's so many. I was literally writing down every single person's motivations in my little notebook. So every time I do a meeting, I'll go, okay, okay. Hey, didn't you want X, Y, and Z? And they'll be surprised that I remember because I'm like, listen, I have a notebook. You know what I mean? I'm, and I'm not so smart. But you got to know the motivations. You got to know the fire. So number one, make sure you hire people that have good egos. Number two, know your team. Number three, set the right commissions where it incentivizes people. Number four, make sure all the data is transparent where everyone knows everything. Number five, recognition, recognition, recognition. By the way, you can never have enough of it. Keep doing it twice a day, five times a day, every day, all day. I don't care. Recognize people for their hard work and their wins. Number six, challenges and competitions, right? You need to have a lot of those competitions and challenges, especially with its salespeople, especially with them, okay? Seven, motivations and fire. What's firing them up? What's going to get them excited? What's going to put a fire under their butt to create success? So I hope you guys appreciate this video. If you did and you liked the video, do me a favor, drop a comment, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, put a little bell so you can get the notifications every time we have a content. We're, we're posting content every single week, every single day. So we appreciate you. Share this with love. I love you guys and I'll see you guys in the next video.